Hello, I'm Toy Cat, and welcome back to another second channel geography video. Have you ever wondered what would happen to the planet if sea levels were to rise so dramatically that there was no land left? The answer is the world map gets surprisingly boring. However, it's quite an interesting question to wonder that if sea levels really can just rise and fall based on uh, temperature of the world, could it be that we had significantly less ocean if we really, really cool down the planet? And the answer is that if we did lose a lot of ocean, the world map would look something like this. And it's such a fascinating map to wonder like, whoa, so many land bridges become possible, so many new continents become connected to each other, and the world gets so much opportunity if we just get rid of that pesky water that's getting in our way. And so if you've ever wondered about different levels of ocean rise, then the interesting thing is that NASA, surprisingly yes, NASA, the US government, NASA, the people going into space, have their own interactive maps, which they made in 2008, although there's a newer version available. They have their own maps, which they made in 2020. I guess they were really bored that September 11th, and they decided to show what the world would be like if the oceans slowly uh, depleted. So interestingly enough, you can see it's interactive. It goes all the way from you know, 10 meters a second all the way down here to the end at minus 10,800. But it's interesting to see that literally in the first few frames, when you lose 70 meters of sea, you already get to the point where Russia, uh, the United States and Canada are expanding massively. But even more interestingly, if you look right here, you can see that the UK connects to mainland Europe at a surprisingly low amount of land. Once you get to 180 meters, you can see that genuinely Sweden and you know, Finland start to connect, the UK is fully connected to Europe, and you've lost all of that island landmass. Uh, even around here, you can see the islands really do have very shallow uh, drops between them, especially compared to that of the deepest oceans. Because even as we go 10 times as high as that, you can still see that like, well, there's a land bridge between the UK and almost just about North America. It's a very slow one. Uh, you can see that most of the continents start to connect up, but the oceans themselves, the deepest parts of the Atlantic Oceans or the Pacific Oceans, these take a lot longer to really drain out. And this is the crazy thing to me. As you get to these really deep parts starting to uncover, you still have water which is being persistent at 5,000 meters, five kilometers of ocean drop. To me, that is like uncomprehendable. Like I can barely picture a pool above 10 meters. Like at that point, like you're just drowning at some point anyway. So 5,000 meters, the ocean depths really are hard to explore. And maybe that explains why it's hard to go and get the Titanic and why you need to have remote controlled subs to go there. But it's so, so interesting to me to realize just how much ocean can still exist at various points and how different the world would be if we had a planet which wasn't 66, you know, that wasn't two thirds water to one third uh, land, but instead we could have had a planet that was the reverse uh, proportions and it would be so much more traversable and honestly less livable because of various climate reasons, but that's no fun. The other interesting way to think about this is what if it didn't happen evenly, because obviously sea levels do rise and fall evenly, but what if we said to the planet, okay, we're willing to sacrifice some people to make sure that everyone, you know, like, because uh, the moment sea levels go up by five meters, a lot of people on the Florida coast, for example, or in some real trouble. So, um, you know, what if we instead sacrifice some parts of the planet? So here's a map of the world's islands. I'm surprised by just how much of the planet is islands. Like I, I live in a fairly islandy area, it turns out. Uh, whenever I play Catan, Catan has this rule of uh, it's whoever was most recently on an island gets to go first. It doesn't work in the UK fundamentally, but you can see that like, it's very interesting to look at this and say that, yeah, there's a lot of islands around the world. If we got rid of all of them and we just had the sea level rise, specifically coat them, then we'd have a planet which looked like this. Uh, uh, this is the world of our islands. It is very, very bizarre, right? I think the biggest losers besides the UK and countries like that. I mean, the biggest winner would be the planet. I don't know why they've blurred out Australia here. <laughs> they have some interesting uh, opinions on Australia's islandness. But um, yeah, it's it's really, when you start to look at this map, you realize very quickly like, yeah, actually, there are lots of countries that lose, but there are some countries that exist still, but in massively reduced states. I mean, Canada's lost a lot of its tenant territory. For example, uh, the United States has lost one of its states altogether, there are these huge losses that start to happen. Oh, is, is Newfoundland gone as well, as well as the Northwest? It's very, very wild to see how much, you know, if we just remove OSHA, if we just remove islands, the planet gets so much more segregated into two halves. There's East and there's West, and that kind of exists right now of our current world map, right? Like, you can kind of see it here, uh, but it gets so much more dramatic when you move, remove basically these connecting islands, these connecting islands. No one would ever use these as the major ways to get between those places, but you realize how isolated the continents really really are by looking at this one. And also, you realize that Australia is apparently not a continent, you know? I, I think that the problem a lot of people have with seeing Australia as an island and not a continent is that it is one country's land. If each of these places were separate states, I think it'd be so much easier to imagine it as a continent. Like, yeah, there's, there's WA, this whole uh, separate place. Then there's this place which you call Quagga Wagga, Alice Springs Land. We could call this, you know, and then if you had all these quirky different names, like Tasmania feels like a country. It sounds like a country. It's got a whole own weird country and accent. Separate 
in Australia. If there were just more of those around Australia, more New Zealands of the world, if you will, uh, then Australia would feel more like a continent. And it is a ridiculously sized landmass, to be fair. But, you know, India's ridiculously sized, and we don't call that a continent. But yeah, it's, it's very interesting to me to uh, people still get that uh, that way, and that's how the map goes. But yeah, if we went the opposite way, because I am an island man, I'm a big believer in islands, you know, do, who do you prefer on this planet, internet? Do you prefer Oman, or do you prefer Japan? Do you prefer South Korea, or do you prefer Indonesia? Probably a bad couple of examples there. Um, but I think that, you know, I think Ireland is much preferable to... Uh, you know, like, uh, Poland, maybe. Actually, you know, yeah, I, I feel like, uh, you know, I, 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 that's, that's a hard one, actually. You know, let, let's go with something uh, a little bit more of an easier slam dunk. I think that Iceland is preferable to, uh, you know, Turkey land and, or Georgia land or Morocco land. There we go. Everyone loves Iceland. No one's going to be offended by that. And so if we just, if we did the exact opposite and we took this map and we removed everyone but the continents, you get this weird archipelago. And it's funny because if you, if you take just this map, one, the British Empire never happens. So, I mean, is it worth it? But two, the more interesting part of this is the fact that the world would be so much more disconnected right now because we kind of rely on continents to connect maybe Major, like, you know, if we just had to go by sea, we would never go to Greenland, right? There's nothing there for us. There's nothing over here for us. There's something in the Caribbean, but, like, is it enough to be worth the huge journey? The world might still be, in the year 2025, uh, still disconnected from each other, because what need do you have to go anywhere? In fact, most of civilization would probably be living in Indonesia, Japan, and the UK in three disconnected blobs. No one would be living in New Zealand, let's be honest. And so you'd have, like, three disconnected blobs of society, two of which vague knew each other existed, and the other of which might not ever know, because you'd have to go to so many dumb islands before realizing the real islands with the real people on are somewhere, and uh, obviously there'd be a lot of problems. So, you know, I hate to say it, but this map actually makes more sense than this one in a weird, upsetting way. Speaking of weird and upsetting, um, something quite interesting is I, uh, I, I I love to play around this nuke map, right? It's a, it's a map of, like, world disasters. It's a map where you can place down a bomb of your choosing, so you could pick, like, the, the largest city in the United States, or actually, let's go over the large city in North America, which is, of course, Mexico City. So we, uh, we can take this, um, you know, actually, let's use the, uh, let's leave New York, just to be nice and simple here. So if we place a big bomb onto New York, and man, that is a big bomb, uh, you can see that it would kill, like, 8 million people or something. It's, it, it kills a lot of people just based on where you place it eventually. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting, like, uh, you know, map to show how nukes could destroy the planet. I think what's really interesting, though, is this nuke, which could very easily add new detonation. I'm, I'm not even sure what's happening here. Uh, cancel the current query. There we go. So you can see that you would kill by dropping a bomb in New York about 6.6 .6 million people. I think it's really fun though because you can place these in any major city and you'll still kill a lot of people, right? So if we kill, if we, if we exclusively try to kill, um, okay, so clear all effects. Let's drop a bomb on Saguenay. I, you know, I really don't like Saguenay, Quebec, but even dropping a bomb there, you're still killing an ungodly number of people. It's one of the biggest disasters in human history. You can drop a nuke basically anywhere that people live, and you'll kill so many people that it would be a world... Uh, level disaster. However, it's interesting how many places you can drop a bomb that are land that nothing bad would happen. I dropped this bomb in the middle of Greenland right here. Zero people get injured and zero people die. Genuinely, people might not even know there'd been a nuke for a while besides from all the radiation that spewed out into Europe. And so I think it's so interesting how many parts of the world have landmass because obviously the ocean, like you drop it there. Actually, we're going to hit some people, aren't we? No, we're not. So uh, you drop a you, you can drop a nuke in the ocean. And for the most part, you're not going to kill people. Um, everyone kind of knows that. But there's so much land on this planet that is basically, you know, not even basically unpopulated, that just is unpopulated. And even the land that is, like right here, I dropped on that island, and I'm going to kill... 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 people. Okay, it's killing a lot of, several hundred people. And it's just interesting to me how much of the land uh, on this planet kind of isn't very much. And so the reason I bring that up is because uh, obviously dropping a nuke in lots of places would be very terrifying for the population, but at least they would know there's a nuke coming. But this is a map of uncontacted tribes where if a nuke happened, they would genuinely not understand the phenomenon. They'd assume that God would co had come and killed them all, right? Uh, but the other interesting thing about this is that I've been playing a, a bit of Last of Us recently. I, I started watching the TV show on a plane and I've been playing the games. It's a really interesting world, this idea of zombie outbreaks, right? If there were a zombie, you know, and every zombie outbreak just assumes the whole world eventually gets hit, would these uncontacted tribes actually be the last bastions of civilizations? Um, because, interestingly enough, like, at, at one point in time, uncontacted tribes were a very normal thing, but we've basically brought the whole world into the order that we have right now. There's only really three groups of tribes that don't have that. There's uh, the ones on Guinea and Indonesia, 
There's ones in the North Sentinel Islands for India, and then there's Brazil and the kind of like a uh, whole Amazonian area. There's a few in different countries, but it's mostly Brazil. And so it's basically down to three countries having uncontacted tribes. And so if there were to be some massive level disaster, a nuke that wipes out the world uh, and, you know, brings us all down, or even more realistically, some giant pandemic, these people have no clue and it's never going to affect them, which is interesting. You know, it's a shame we haven't had any pandemics so we could test that, right? Um, but yeah, these people are not uncontacted, by the way. Uh, I think it's a really interesting thing to note. They're actually voluntarily disconnected from the world, basically. Um, unlike, you know, most people that are uncontacted, eventually join in with the world order. These are people that are like, yes, we do not want any part of what you're offering. Please leave us alone. And so they still throw spears. They still have like, uh, you know, like tribe-like behavior. And it's wild to me that there are basically humans that are like several dozen steps below us on the tech rung that are just, that, that don't even know. They don't even know there's a British man making geography videos right now, let alone be able to watch it. And you know, isn't that a true tragedy? But the other interesting true tragedy is, um, cause uh, you know, while talking about water, I think we have to talk about one of the natural uh, points of interest, which is how you can bridge over that water, right? I mean, uh, like it doesn't really matter. You know, it'd be nice if we could have a world where you could go straight from the UK to Europe via land, but instead of making land by draining the entire ocean, which is, by the way, have to mention, one of the smartest things we could do of the Mediterranean, all you need to do to make a lot of new land in Europe is drain the, con you know, like drain this whole area, see, see, see uh, you know, kind of build a dam over here, build a dam over here, slowly drain this whole area out, and then this whole thing, you could have a, a, a massively connected Europe without having to drain the whole world. I think it's a good idea. Uh, someone should get on that. Uh, seriously, you just need to dam one dam here, one dam over here. Um, you know, we accidentally do that with big boats all the time. And so all we'd have to do is do that and we'd get rid of all this coastline here and we'd have a whole new bunch of civilizations, which I don't know what we'd do with it. And it would cause all sorts of issues with Africa, uh, European migration. But let's not think about that. Let's instead think about the fact that, yeah, right now we have a solution to doing this stuff, which is bridges. You know, when, when Copenhagen wants to connect to Sweden, uh, they don't go, oh, yeah, we'd better drain all the ocean here. Or it's a, technically a sea. We don't, we, we, let's drain the Baltic Sea and the North Sea and dam it up. They just go, uh, you know, they're not Dutch or, or anything like that. Uh, what they instead just do is they go, sure, we'll build a bridge. A bridge is a way of bringing up the land level effectively. And although you can make bridges that have artificial land in them, uh, it is it's, it's worth mentioning this is what we do. And so bridges around the world are so interesting to me because they're partially used for economic benefit. I mean, the bridge from Copenhagen to Sweden, big economic benefit. The bridge um, from, uh, you know, there are all sorts of bridges which are built with these huge, uh, like, benefits in mind. Of like, uh, One of the weird examples of these is... Um, New Orleans is connected to a weird suburb over here via a huge bridge. I always have to bring that up. It's so wild to me. There's multiple examples of these too. Um, but all sorts of places are bridged for the benefit of the people. But sometimes, like with the Michigan Bridge, it's bridged for the sake of unity of that state. And sometimes it's not just a state, it's a whole country. So the UK, for example, uh, famously are trying to build uh, a bridge over to Scotland. I, I think we actually just spent a lot of money saying that we would do it and then didn't do it, which is, you know, something something Boris Johnson. But, uh, you know, like uh, we, we spent a lot of money on the idea of a beautiful bridge that would be 32 kilometers long to connect Northern Ireland to Scotland. Right now, the UK has two major land masses and like 600 others. The U there's Great Britain over here and Northern Ireland. And if you want national unity between these two bits, rather than leaving them isolated, you build a bridge so people can go back and forth easy. And so this isn't just a British idea. It's actually been done in a oh, weird, weird website. Italy wants to build the longest suspension bridge, although the mafia and geography are making that equally difficult, this headline would imply. And uh, they, they want to, you know, bridge the mainland of Italy to Sicily, which right now it's crazy to me this hasn't been done. But more interestingly to me even than that is the fact that Tanzania, which is made up of two former colonies, there's Tanzania and there is, oh, I think it might be Tangankia uh, maybe, uh, but there's also Zanzibar. Zanzibar is a very famous colony, very, very uh, wealthy area by the way, and so their goal is to bring them closer together. Uh, by the way, here's Zanzibar in case that isn't convincing enough for you, uh, but they want to bring them together with one of the longest bridges in the world and the longest bridge in Africa. It would be absolutely wild, um, and it sounds like an insane thing to do to build a bridge for national unity, but funnily enough, they did that with Prince Edward Island in Canada. It's, it's, it's the most ridiculous province that exists in Canada. They should just kick them out, see how it goes. But basically, uh, Canada has an obligation to build ferries to connect places, and so they, 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 they charged an insane toll for those ferries, and so they just figured, wait, we could charge a toll for a bridge, and because a bridge costs one amount, you have to keep paying for ferries, it's cheaper in the long run, and so even though it costs a wild amount of money for Prince Edward Islanders to go in and out of the mainland. Now there is a bridge there. If you charge enough money, 
any piece of infrastructure makes sense. And so I was thinking, what is the most ridiculous bridge a country could build for national unity reasons? Obviously, the tolls would have to get a lot higher if it's $80 for PEI and it's going to cost uh, hundreds in some cases. Uh, imagine how high you could get if you went for, example, North Sentinel Island. You know, we, we finally decide the Andabar and Nikman Islands, of which North Sentinel Islands is a part. We want to connect these to mainland India. Uh, they could go, yeah, we'll just build ourselves a nice, nice, easy 1,000 kilometer bridge. Sure, you'd have to drive for, <laughs> what would that be, like 10 hours in a row uh, if you have insane speed limits? Sure, you drive for 10 hours in a row, but it'd be a real good bridge, right? And it's funny because that's actually a really mild example of how far you can go to connect one country to another part of that same country. Um, after the Vietnam uh, video I made last week, uh, if you haven't watched it, don't, it's bad, but um, <laughs> you know, that that's how every YouTubers promote their stuff. You know, I made a video last week and it's not your obligation to watch it, but if you like learning about Vietnam, you could know that the two capitals are so far apart. And in fact, Vietnam, the most direct route from Vietnam to Vietnam would be over two other countries. So the logical thing there is to build a bridge over those countries. Really good idea, trust me. I, 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 in the same way, um, you could see logically countries like Australia, uh, the Tasmania really could do with a big bridge over there. But the silliest examples, because that's what this channel is all about, uh, would be Portugal connecting to the Azores Islands, so Lisbon to the Azores. You know, a lo logical connection would be about 1,400 kilometers. Okay, that's pretty good, sure. I mean, the United States, I mentioned Hawaii, they don't want to lose them in the big flood, and so they build a bridge there of 3,800 kilometers. They, funnily enough, do that in Bojack Horseman. It's a, it's a very fun little bit. It would be 2,400 miles, which means it would take, even at insane speeds, 24 hours to drive. Man, you don't realize how far Hawaii is away until you say that, huh? Um, which is, that's far by even American standards. Um, but the best example would, of course, be the United Kingdom or France. If you wanted to drive from London on a direct bridge all the way out to Edinburgh of the Seven Seas, or rather, let's be more fun, let's make the bridge go from Edinburgh to Edinburgh of the Seven Seas, it'd be about 10,000 kilometers, or about half the distance of the planet. Although, obviously, as always, when it comes to empire uh, and officially being a part of a country, France wins on this one because from France to French Polynesia, uh, you would have to travel about 15,000 kilometers. Admittedly, uh, for about 5,000 of those kilometers, you could go over Canada and the United States. So you could just buy, uh, you know, like some land from Canada and the US. I'm sure they're exactly willing to sell. But um, yeah, all you have to do is build a very long... And also, look at this. There's already a, ch a tunnel between uh, France and the UK. So you just have to bring the tunnel over there and then you just have to uh, connect through Greenland, so that's gonna be nice and easy. Go through Canada, go through the US, and then boom, after just a 9,100 mile drive, or about uh, 91 hours if you're going well above the speed limit on a very much safe, stable bridge, which would definitely have a 100 mile per hour speed limit, then boom, you could be from France to France, and that is the best bridge they should totally make, or series of bridges, maybe. maybe. Anyway, with that said, I hope that you found uh, this video to be something, because if you had, then that means that I should have made it. I, I am enjoying making a... I, I, I feel like we're going a little bit goofy on some of these videos because I, I, I sometimes just find a map and I'm like, I don't know where this map needs to be used, but I love it. And just, uh, you know, like, first of all, the comparison of these two maps, like all islands, no islands, it just, it just fascinates me and it tickles me. And if you get tickled by maps, then maybe you'll enjoy this channel. You can subscribe to see more geography stuff. But as always, uh, second channel, uh, don't care. Buy my merch, actually. Wait, I have, mu I have mugs that tell you you'll die someday. And uh, that's 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 as good as I can get, actually. Maybe maybe you could also uh, check out my my Patreon, where I will make videos of such a quality like this, uh, based on the number of people uh, that have been joining there. I appreciate everyone who has become a patron recently, by the way. Been buying lobster lobster rolls and kebabs, and uh, I appreciate that a lot. It's been one of the big encouragements in making more videos. So thank you to everyone who has been over to Patreon.com/toycat. And uh, as always, second channel. Don't care. I'm gonna go take a nap or something now. Goodbye.